Encyclopedia Galactica. Harry Selden. Born in the 11,988th year of the Galactic Era, died 12,069. The dates are more commonly given in terms of the current foundational era as 79 to the year 1 FE. Born to middle-class parents on Helicon, Archerous Sector where his father, in a legend of doubtful authenticity, was a tobacco grower in the hydroponic plants of the planet. He early showed amazing ability in mathematics. Anecdotes concerning his ability are innumerable, and some are contradictory. At the age of two, he is said to have... <laughs> Undoubtedly his greatest contributions were in the field of psychohistory. Seldom found the field little more than a set of vague axioms, he lived in a profound statistical science. The best existing authority we have for the details of his life is the biography written by Carl Dornick who, as a young man, met Seldon two years before the great mathematician's death. The story of the meeting. His name was Carl Dornick, and he was just a country boy who had never seen Transor before. This is not in real life. He had seen it many times on the Hyper Video and occasionally in tremendous three-dimensional newscasts covering an Imperial coronation or the opening of a Galactic Council. Even though he had lived all his life on the world of Synax, which circled a star at the edge of the Blue Drift, he was not cut off from civilization. you see. At the time, no place in the galaxy was. There were nearly 25 million inhabited planets in the galaxy then and not but one of them owed allegiance to the Empire, whose seat was on Trantor. It was the last half century in which that could be said. To Garth, this trip was the undoubted climax of his young scholarly life. He had been in space before, so that the trip as a voyage was nothing more meant little to him. To be sure, he had travelled previously only as far as Synax's only satellite in order to get the data on the mechanics of meteor drifting, which he needed for his dissertation. But space travel was all one, whether one travelled half a million miles or as many light years. He had steeled himself just a little for the jump from hyperspace. A phenomena one did not experience in simple interplanetary trips. The jump remained, and would probably remain forever, the only practical method of travelling between the stars. Travel through ordinary space could only proceed at no rate more rapid than that of ordinary light. A bit of scientific knowledge that belonged among the few items known since the forgotten dawn of human history. and that would have meant years of travel between even the nearest of inhabited systems. Through hyperspace, the unimaginable region that was neither space nor time, matter nor energy, something nor nothing, one could traverse the length of the galaxy in the intervals between two, neighb between two neighboring instants of time. Gar had waited for the first of those jumps with a little dread curled gently in his stomach, and it ended in nothing more than a trifling jar, a little internal kick which seized an instant before he could be sure that he had felt it. That was all, and after that there was only the ship, large, glistening, the cool product of 12,000 years of imperial progress, and himself with his doctorate in mathematics freshly obtained and an invitation from the great Harry Selden to come to Trantor and join the vast and somewhat mysterious Selden project. What Gar was waiting for after the disappointment of the jump was the first sight of Trantor. He haunted the view room, the steel shutter lid were rolled back at announced times and he was always there watching the hard brilliance of the stars, enjoying the incredible hazy swarm of star clusters, like a giant conglomeration of fireflies, caught in mid-motion and stilled forever. At one time, there was the cold blue white smoke of a gaseous nebula within five light years of the ship, spreading over the window 
like distant milk, filling the room with an icy tinge and disappearing out of sight two hours later. After another jump, the first sight of Trantor's son was that of a hard white speck, all but lost in the myriad such, and recognisable only because it was pointed out by the ship's guide. The stars were thick here at the galactic centre, but with each jump it shone more bright, drowning out the rest, paling them and thinning them out. An officer came through and said, The room will be closed for the remainder of the trip. Prepare for landing. Garl had followed after, clutching at the sleeve of the white uniform with the spaceship and son of the Empire on it. He said, Would it be possible to let me stay? I would like to see Trantor. The officer smiled at Garl, flushed a bit. It occurred to him that he had spoke with a provincial accent. The officer said, We're we'll landing on Trantor by morning. I mean, I want to see it from space. Oh, sorry, my boy. If this was a space yacht, we might manage it. But we're spinning down Sunside. You wouldn't want to be blinded, burnt, and radiation scarred all at the same time, would you? Girl started to walk away. The officer called after him. Trantor would only be a grey blur anyway, kid. Why don't you take a space tour once you hit Trantor? They're cheap. Girl looked back. Thank you very much. It was childish to feel disappointed but childish comes almost as naturally to a man as to a child, and there was a lump in Gal's throat. He had never seen Trantor spread out in all its incredibility, as large as life, and he hadn't expected to have to wait longer.